The sponsor of this video is Dollar Shave Club. Shave time and shave money as you get high quality razors and other bathroom accessories like the One White Charlies shipped to your door to make your bathroom chips that much better. Virtual reality is the bleeding edge of gaming right now, and the Oculus Developer Kit 2 is the bleeding edge of virtual reality. Now this is no doubt an incredible peripheral especially for gaming, but how great is it right now? So let me just fill you in here. The Oculus Rift DK2 or Developer Kit 2 is a virtual reality headset. You just put it on your head and you're immersed in your game. Now on the inside are two lenses and behind both of those lenses is half of a 1080p screen. So in total you have just about a 1080p screen right in front of your eyes with the lenses to accompany or accommodate for um, distortion and stuff like that. But then the DK2 also has improved head tracking functionality using a camera and it tracks IR LEDs all over the headset. So say you look left in your game, you'll look left just like you did in real life. So that's where the immersion comes in. This headset has huge potential for complete immersion. But I say potential there for a reason because throughout this video I'm going to explain why it's called a developer kit and it is not the consumer version. Now this is just my first impressions of the device because I can't really have anything but first impressions right now. The game library that's compatible with the DK2 is super limited and then there's a program called Vorp X that makes your Oculus Swift work with other games like say Battlefield, Call of Duty, or Skyrim and stuff like that but that compatibility with the DK2 is also pretty limited right now. So in just a little while, I'll do an updated look or more of a review of the Oculus once I get more time with it and get to try more real games with it. But for now, this is just my first impressions. Let's start from the beginning. Unboxing was pretty easy, but setting it up was not easy at all. There were a bunch of cables to plug into different parts of your computer and the outlets and whatnot. And then there was a bunch of software you had to download to get it all working. You had to update your firmware all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's complicated, but it's easily possible. It's not like impossible to do, just obviously geared towards a developer and not a consumer, but it is the developer kit, so I can't complain about that. When you finally get it working, you can play the demo included with the Oculus downloads. Now this demo really shows off its capabilities. You're in a virtual reality world and you can just look around, lean over stuff, move around if you're using a controller or your keyboard, and it just shows off the Oculus DK2's abilities. Now there are also other games that will work with the Oculus in the forums, and if you can get them working, which they do most of the time, they work really well. You can like be flying through space in one game, there are roller coaster games, and then there's a game that you play Pong in a virtual reality and you control the paddle with your eyes. It's really awesome when it does work because there's no experience that compares with this type of virtual reality experience. Being in the Oculus and using it is interesting. From what I've gathered so far, in order for it to work best, your head movement needs to be important in the game. When you're controlling something or some entity with just your head movement, it's extremely immersive. But of course, it's just a developer kit. You can still see pixels, even with the 1080p, you can definitely see pixels, which means the consumer version is probably going to have to be higher than 1080p, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it be 1440p or even 4K. Now it's worth noting that not all games are going to work with the DK2, even the ones that are supposed to be compatible with it. You still have to do a lot of workarounds, doing different executables and different application files and stuff like that, but you're assumed to be able to do that since it is a developer kit. If you're a developer, it is not going to be that hard to get a game working, but it's not just going to work right out of the box like you would expect it to work like on an Xbox or something. But when it does work and it works perfectly, it's like a breath of fresh air because it just works and it's an incredible experience. Let's get a little specky with the DK2. The 1080p screen and the 75Hz refresh rate give it a smooth and sharp experience for a virtual reality headset. And the motion tracking that lets you like look over walls and lean and stuff like that is extremely impressive. I, I think the camera and the IR LEDs was a really good idea, but all that has shortcomings. The 1080p screen should be higher, you can still see the pixels. A higher refresh rate would also be nice. And then with the motion tracking, the headset has to be in view of the camera. So if you turn all the way around, suddenly the camera can't see the IR LEDs and your head tracking stops working because the camera needs direct sight. So I think all those are fixable and the Oculus Rift line has a lot of potential, but it's just not quite there yet. But luckily, Oculus is working on that and it will be there eventually. And Facebook bought Oculus, so I don't think financing will be any problem whatsoever. I think there's a lot of potential in the Oculus Rift line and they're definitely going to fulfill it. So overall, I guess that my first impressions are that the DK2 is a good developer kit. The high res screen, the high refresh rate, and the motion tracking capabilities all show that the Oculus has a lot of potential and can do a lot of things. But setting it up, finding games that will work with it, making the games work with it, and all that kind of stuff is still pretty developer-y. It's not very consumer friendly. 
So if you're a developer and you're looking for it, look no further. This is fantastic. But if you're a consumer, you're better off waiting for the consumer version, which I'll definitely be purchasing to keep. I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping this one. But other than that, that's it. Those are my first impressions of the DK2. I'll be doing a couple more videos on this, um, a full review, and then I'll do one more video after that, but I'm going to keep that a secret. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a dislike and let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and stay classy. Now, before I head out, I want to talk about Dollar Shave Club one more time. Now, if you're like me, going to the store to buy razors is extremely expensive and annoying. I end up just staring at all the useless options. All the big shave companies are ripping you off with their shave tech like pivoting balls. Stop spending $20 on pivoting balls. For just a few bucks a month, Dollar Shave Club will send high quality razors right to your door. There's no more forgetting and you always have fresh blades to use. But are they high quality blades? Well, in the words of Dollar Shave Club, Our blades are f***ing great. For just six bucks a month, you can get the 4X razor shipped to your door. Now this has four stainless steel blades and an aloe lubricating strip for just six bucks a month. And if you're a high roller, for just nine bucks a month, you can get the executive six blade razor shipped to your door. The first month you buy, they will send you a free handle along with the four blade cartridges. And then each month after that, they will just send you a package of the four cartridges. Also, be sure to try out the One Wipe Charlies. They're, uh, butt wipes for men. Yeah, bitch. Butt wipes. Shave time and shave money at dollarshaveclub.com slash mstech.